Hello, everyone! I like Tetris, and I've bought Tetris many times throughout my life. Usually on different platforms, whether it's a Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, PSP, a phone, a console, whatever. Some systems have a couple versions of Tetris, usually one or two, maybe three. But the Nintendo Switch family of systems has just got its seventh version of Tetris. And being the fool I am, I've bought and I've put many hours into every single version on the Nintendo Switch. So let's explore the depths of this falling block puzzle game. How can there be so many on one system? What makes them different? Viewer, you're asking foolish questions. They're more different than anything in the world. You'll see. Come on, come on, go, let's, go, let's go see them. Let us begin with the latest edition thanks to Game Boy Nintendo Switch Online. It is the original Game Boy Tetris, and I have so much love for this one. Tetris has become a lot more forgiving over the years, showing you where your block is going to land, letting you switch them out, and generally the AI is just a bit more generous about what blocks it's going to give you. But not this one. And the reason I love that is because it encourages you to improvise with your layout. You could be setting up for a line piece to give you a Tetris, but the game isn't that kind. Oftentimes you'll have the ideal placement for a line block to come down, but the game's like, no, have, have, have an S, have an L, have a backwards L, have a T. It will never give you what you want. And that's great, because then you can work with what you've got and do something else entirely. And when you pull that off, there is no better feeling. Despite there being decades of refinement to Tetris, this game in its purest form is still timeless. And the aesthetics of this version still hold up so well. Whether it's the music, the A theme, the B theme, e even the C theme. The visuals, yeah, they're just blocks, but what about the rocket that goes off when you get a good score? If somehow you've gone your life without playing Game Boy Tetris, rectify that now. And yet the best part about this specific Switch version is it's allowed me to do something that I've only dabbled with, and that dabbling was decades ago, and that is multiplayer. I completely forgot that Mario and Luigi are in this game. There's Nintendo branding in here. But because this emulator is online, you can play competitive Tetris with your friends. And of course, the connection depends who you're playing with. Playing with Bloops in the UK was pretty much flawless. Playing with Johnny in the US, it would skip a few times, but still the latency was pretty great. However, playing with Haru did have some bad latency. But when it works, it is so much fun. It's still the same sending garbage rule sets from modern Tetris, but with these older mechanics, it can be so intense. And I love watching Mario cry. Yeah, cry Mario. You're a loser. Luigi number one. If I were to make a top five games on Nintendo Switch, Tetris 99 would absolutely be one of them. I think this game is just as good as Smash Bros. Ultimate, Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, Metroid Dread. It is phenomenal. It's developed by Arika, the developers behind Endless Ocean, and this isn't their first Tetris Rodeo, these guys are coming up again soon. But what makes this ingenious is it's a Tetris Battle Royale, 99 players battling it out. You can use the right stick to target players, flipping the stick up targets players who are nearly gone, flipping it to the right targets the most successful player, and flipping it down targets those who are targeting you. So there is so much strategy in this, just playing Tetris is but a layer of what this game is. It's less that you're clearing blocks to survive, and more that you're clearing blocks as ammo to send to other players. It definitely has a far more generous system than Game Boy Tetris, and will often give you what you need. But when you enter scenarios like this, where so many players are targeting you, and you're on the brink of death, but you're somehow still holding on, it is absolutely exhilarating. This is free for all Nintendo Switch Online members, and because of that, it's actually an incredibly popular game. People may not talk about it too often, but you'll very easily find a 99 player game in the core mode. Other modes are a bit more spread out today. If you've come first in a game before, you unlock Invictus. This is basically a much faster, harder mode, and it's quite rare to fully populate this one. There's also a team-based mode, and a local mode, and just your regular survival, and then a bunch of themes. Themes for Mario, themes for Pokemon, themes for Zelda, themes for Metroid, themes for Kirby. Kirby's got a bunch of themes. If I'm ever in a weird mood and just don't really want to do anything, this game always gets me out of it. I can play this game anytime, anywhere, even if my body was on fire. I would play this game. You can't stop me. Don't you dare use that hose, I'm about to win! I was shocked when they announced Tetris the Grand Master for Switch. 
This is Arika's other Tetris, and it originally released in Japan in 1998 for arcades. And what makes this special is this is a very hardcore Tetris. It plays a bit like the Game Boy game, but you can't hold pieces, and you can't really rotate them once they've started touching a surface. You can a little bit, but not too much. But what makes this special, beyond just being a pretty hard version of Tetris, is it keeps evolving. For instance, you start off being able to see the shadow of where your block's gonna land, but when you go to the next round, your shadow's gone! Wah! You're impaired! Sometimes it will speed way up, but then start to slow down. But that is a false sense of security, because it's gonna gradually get faster and faster and faster until it gets to this point, and I can't do a thing. So what the flip is Tetris Diamond? Well, this game's only available on the Japanese eShop, and that's because this is a Japanese mobile game. And when I say mobile game, I don't mean smartphone. I mean this was like a 2008 regular phone game. In the core Tetris mode, there's nothing too unique about this. It's basically just standard Tetris. You can see a shadow, you can hold pieces, you can rotate them once they've sort of touched the ground a little bit. It's very standard modern Tetris. But the caller mode is the diamond mode. What's unique about this is if you look at the pieces that are coming up, some of them will be all sparkly and diamondy. And if you clear lines with these pieces, you get even more points. So it sort of incentivizes you to improvise and use what you have when you have it, and I really love that. Like maybe you've got a great setup for a line piece to get a Tetris, but there is a piece coming up that's a diamond and it's just a T piece. That could change your entire approach, and that's awesome. Tetris Diamond definitely isn't the most in-depth game or the most special game in this video, but I still think it's pretty darn rad. And boy, oh boy, it's one of the most special games of this generation. It's Tetris Effect Connected. And if you've not played this game, you need to first apologize <laughs> and then go play it. It doesn't matter what platform you play it on, just give it a go. It's on Game Pass. I think it's on, it's on PlayStation Plus Premium. It might be. I don't know. Just play it. Tetris Effect is an audio-visual experience. It is a journey. Just playing this game from start to finish makes me feel so many emotions. Every song, whether they're upbeat or atmospheric, just give you a feeling in a way that very few other games can even come close to accomplishing. It's not just standard Tetris survival. The speed moves to the tempo of the song. Sometimes it gets faster, sometimes it gets slower. But the real magic is how it all blends together with the gameplay and the visuals. You can really lose yourself to this game. You just get into this state of zen, and it is fantastic. But there is a lot more to this game than just that. There's also the zone meter, which fills up as you clear lines. When you press this, everything stops. And in this still point of time, you can get a bunch of Tetrises and get up to a 24 clear. The most I've got, I believe, is 22. I try and I try and I try. I don't think I'll ever get 24. But it feels so good getting such a high number. There's also a bunch of different modes too, like one that gives you a bunch of random effects, such as changing the size of your pieces, or making it so you can't rotate. And the online mode that came with the connected update is easily one of the most special online experiences ever. There is just standard head-to-head -head Tetris, but the real special mode is connected. This is a co-op mode. Three players work together to take down an AI boss. And basically, once the zone meter is full, all your grids combine, and you're then working together to get as many Tetrises as you can in the still point of time. And the objective is basically to knock out the opponent with a giant splash of zone meter Tetrises. I hope every single one of you watching this video buys Tetris Effect. And if not, I'm coming for you. Finally, we have two more Tetris games with Puyo Puyo Tetris 1 and Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. I'm quite often asked what's the point of owning both of these games, and uh, it depends how much you care really. Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 is basically an expanded version of the first game, although the first game does have a completely unique story mode with a bunch of voice acting and a really extensive script, so if you care about the story there's definitely value to owning both of these games, but if you just want it for the gameplay, then yeah, go for Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. Also, Puyo Puyo Tetris 1 predated the Switch having video capture, so you can't take videos in this one. You can in 2. 2's also got a way bigger character roster, including Sonic the Frickin' Hedgehog! There's also an RPG mode in 2, coming from Puyo Puyo Chronicle, where the objective isn't necessarily to knock out your opponent, but to clear their HP meter, and you've got a bunch of different skills that you can do that with. But other than that, same core gameplay, same core modes. This is a great gateway to learning Puyo Puyo, but if you want to, you can just stick with Tetris, and that is absolutely fine. This is both highly competitive Puyo Puyo and Tetris, but also very casual party Puyo Puyo and Tetris. 
There's a mode that has a bunch of power-ups, like stopping you from rotating, or making a light sway around so you can barely see what you're doing. And there's other modes too, like one where you swap between playing Puyo Puyo and Tetris. So one moment you're playing Puyo Puyo, but then the clock ticks down and now you're playing Tetris. It's very accessible, and there's so much style with a bunch of customization options for your pieces, and a bunch of backgrounds, and so much music. But online is the scary place. Puyo Puyo Tetris 1 didn't have very many options online, it was just play against other players. But in Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, you can choose between a league of both Puyo Puyo and Tetris, or just a Puyo Puyo League, or a Tetris League. So if you want to in Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, you can just play Tetris online against other Tetris players. But the problem is, they are all absolutely flippin' terrifying. I consider myself pretty good at Tetris and Puyo Puyo, until I touch online in this game. Then I am trash. It can be really fun if someone else is your skill level, but most of the time it's more like this. Have you ever watched professional Puyo Puyo Tetris? It looks like this. These aren't humans. But even if I am scared of online, Puyo Puyo Tetris 1 and 2 are really special, cozy games. The first one got me deep into Puyo Puyo, and my Puyo Puyo folder is around the same size as my Tetris folder. I want more of both of these games. So now that you know about all the different versions of Tetris on the Switch, why don't you go out there and play each and every one of them, and smile while doing so? And by the way, the Mega Drive Mini had a Tetris as well, and seeming as a lot of that, that mini console's library has found its way onto the uh, Mega Drive NSO, I think there's a very high chance that that's going to come along as well at some point, and that would give us our 8th version, making this video obsolete. I'm mentioning it now! I'm mentioning it now in case it does happen, okay? We're future-proofing. If it happens, it's in here. It, it, it exists. We, we know it exists. Bye, everyone. Bye.